After you've created your warp, you're ready to grab a plastic needle and some yarn, and it doesn't matter what color you choose, to begin weaving on your board. To take the yarn and cut it to be ready for your needle, you wanna take your arms, hold the yarn in one hand, and you wanna take your arms and stretch them out like you're gonna play basketball and you're guarding somebody as far as your arms can stretch out, and you wanna measure that length and then cut the yarn. If you end up with more yarn than that, it sometimes gets tangled up. If you end up with less yarn, then you have to keep on adding more yarn all the time. So that's about a good length is to stretch your arms out. You wanna take this yarn, put it through the eye of your needle, and then you can tie it to your needle with a simple knot, crisscrossing them, just like you would tie your shoe, taking this string and going back through that loop and pulling to make a knot. I double knot it so it doesn't slide around or fall off. So again, you're just crisscrossing those pieces. It's making a loop. This part of the tail has to come down and then back through the loop. Once that's double knotted, I'm ready to start weaving. If I'm right-handed, I like to start my weaving on the right side. If I'm left-handed, I like to start on the left side, but we're gonna be weaving both directions anyway, so it really doesn't matter where you start. What it does matter though, is that you start by putting your needle in to the weaving using an under pattern. So I'm going under the first warp string and over the second, under the second or the third and over the fourth. My pattern should be under, over, under, over, and it continues all the way across the board. All right, I've got my needle all the way across under over pattern. So now I need to take this and pull the yarn until I've got just a tail left over. We'll tie that tail later on. If it makes you feel comfortable and you really wanna tape it on so it doesn't fall off, you can, or you can just leave it here because in just a minute it'll be locked in place. I'm gonna push this down and that's called beat it. So I'm beating it down until it matches up with this cardboard here. And then I'm ready to take my needle and turn around and keep weaving the other direction. This is another thing that people want to sometimes do is take your needle and go back over to the side you started on. But if you do that, you're gonna end up with this long string across the top that is not woven into your warp strings. So wherever, I call this your tail, wherever your tail is, is where you're gonna start weaving at. So all my yarn's over here, that means my needle needs to stay over here with it. I'm looking down at the, at the weaving before, this weft right here. This is over blue, so my next move is under blue. Doesn't matter what you started with, it matters where you are right now. I'm going under blue because that's the opposite of the one below it. Under and then over. I can do a couple of these warp strings and then I can stop to check is the needle doing the opposite of what my string did before. If my string was over blue, my needle is under blue. Continue that pattern all the way across. Once you've got it through, pull it. And we always wanna pull until there's no tail left on that side. If I pull this really, really, really tight, I'm gonna end up making my warp strings squeeze together, which is gonna make my weaving too skinny. So I wanna pull it tight, but not so hard that it moves my strings. And then again, I can beat it. You can do that with your fingers pushing it down, or you can do that with your needle. And you just wanna make sure that those two rows are touching each other. Again, all my string is over on this side. My needle stays with it, and it turns and goes the opposite direction. This string is over. I start with an under.
Once I have woven a couple rows and I'm running out of string, I wanna stop, especially if I have any less or maybe about the same length as my needle because I need enough string to tie a new piece on. So I wanna cut this off as close to the needle as I can, saving as much of that tail as possible. And this is the point where you can either continue with more gray string or whatever color you have, or you can switch strings and add something new. Remember to stretch out your arms like you're playing basketball. Cut that string as long as your arms. Put that string onto your needle again, same process. Tying that string on with a double knot. All right, and then I have to tie this piece of the string, the end of it, onto the tail that I had left over. So these two tails are gonna get tied together. This tie is a little bit different than the tie on the needle. So what I do is I take two pieces of string and put them together. I wrap them around my finger. This is why you need some extra yarn so you have enough room. So I'm wrapped around my finger together. I'm pinching at the spot where I'm holding both strings. I'm gonna gently slide my finger out so that I've got a loop. And then these two together are gonna go through that loop. I got the yellow one, but I need to make sure I got the gray one as well. And then I'm gonna pull that tight. Feel free to rewind and watch again if you can't get that tie, or if you've tried and you can't get it, come ask me. Once you have the tails tied and the needles tied, you just continue weaving the same way that you were before. I'm all my tails over here, so I'm staying on this side and I'm gonna start weaving this direction. I'm checking to see what I did before and I went over blue, so now I need, now I need to go under blue. 